Metal Interview. Hey, how's it going, everybody out there, all the fellow metalheads and rockers, headbangers? Thank you for tuning in to J Rock's Metal Zone dot com right here on this new episode of that metal interview um thank you for all the support on social media tumblr snapchat facebook twitter instagram periscope twitch and all of the above thank you for joining us and liking us and blah 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 or the whole nine yards uh my name is james and uh Today we'd like to welcome the one and only, the legendary, the drummer of drummers. This guy replaced Bill Ward of the legendary Black Sabbath back back in the day and uh, went on to join Dio. And uh, we'll let him talk, talk about the rest of his career. The one and only Vinny Epicy. How are you doing, Vinny? I'm doing good. How are you, James? Good to talk to you. I'm doing good. I'm doing good. We're good. Oh, here, putting up with the cold here in Texas, as we're not used to it. It's either hot or it's too cold. So, <laughs> yeah. What part of Texas? Uh, we're at Eagle Pass, Texas. Uh, it's a couple hours from San Antonio, San Antonio, Texas. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Since we were in the Dallas and Houston uh, yesterday, not yesterday, a couple over the weekend. So. Oh, really? Okay. Pretty good. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, first of all, uh, we appreciate your, your time, Vinny, uh, the fans, uh, all your fans, and of course, he, everybody here at J-Rock's Metal Zone. Thank you for making time for us. So, uh, uh, we'd like to c congratulate the band, Last in Line, on, the, on your latest single, Black Out the Sun. Great, great tune, great writing. Uh, congratulations, man. Uh, yeah, that's the second video that was released from the new album, which is called Last in Line 2. And um, it seems to be getting a really good uh, response, and we're all real happy about it. So uh, check it out on uh, YouTube, obviously, where it sits. Yeah, we're playing Black Out the Sun here on, on J-Rock's Metal Zone. We're playing it. Uh, great song, great track, man. Um, let's go to the first question here. Um, for those fans, those people that don't know and want to know more about Last in Line, uh, can you tell us how that came about and uh, how that started out, Last in Line? Well, Jimmy called me and said he was in touch with Jimmy, Jimmy Bain at the time, and um, do you want to have a, you know, go in the studio, play, have, have some fun, just play down some of the songs, you know, just just, just for fun, but Yeah. So, um, I said, sure, that would be great. So we booked the room, and um, we did it just the three of us, you know? Okay. And, the, uh, and we had a good time, it was fun. You know, we were cracking up with all the, uh, all the, all the uh, forgetting of the parts and stuff, because we hadn't played them in a while, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so well, we had a good time, and then after that, we decided to do it again the next week. And then uh, Andy Freeman was in town; he's a friend of mine. Okay, yeah. So I called him up. I said, "You want to come down and sing some of these songs?" And he said, "Sure." So he came down and he blew everybody away. You know, he was like, uh, "Yeah," just uh, took charge of those songs. It was just great. Yeah, he's That's a great, great, great singer. <laughs> Yeah, so then we decided, well, well, it'd be fun to do some gigs, you know? Why don't we do gigs? So we booked some gigs, and then we started doing gigs, and our manager, Steve Strange, took us over to uh, Europe, wow. and, uh, and then Japan, and then uh, we got an offer from Frontier Records to do a, a record. So that's yeah. how it all came about. And then we went, you know, we, we signed with Frontiers, and then we went into the studio, we wrote all the stuff, and then uh, we recorded, and then the album was coming out in February, I think it was February 16th, 2016, and right before that, Jimmy Bain passed away, you know, on bass player. Well, yeah, so, uh, I read about that, yeah. Yeah, so, so we had to, uh, 
you know, put the brakes on it for a little bit. The album came out, and uh, we had to regroup our thoughts, and then we decided we'll carry on, Viv and I and Andy, and we started uh, playing with different bass players, and when Phil came in, Phil Sushan, it was just perfect. Yeah, it just fit in, like, perfectly. Oh, yeah, Phil was on. Oh, yeah. Yeah, all star, so, and plus we know him forever too, you know. Yeah, talk talk about an all star lineup, all stars, man. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we weren't doing that, and you know, we were just doing what's best musically. We weren't out there trying to, you know, make it an all star band or anything like that. It just happened yeah. to be that way. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. so anyway, uh, that's how it came about. Now, then we just did a lot of shows a lot of gigs since then and uh, started working on this album in 2018 yeah and uh, finally finished it up and now this baby's coming out soon yeah probably 20 seconds to be exact last of line 2 the brand new album of course uh, pick it up at your favorite record store uh, download it stream it um how about that rock and roll fantasy camp? Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, rock and roll fantasy camp is something else I do with uh, my friend David Fishoff, who run you know owns the company and put put this together. And I've been doing them for about ten years, and it's uh, a really fantastic thing. So the next one coming up is with uh, Journey, and oh, wow. looking forward to that. Yeah, it's about a week and a half away, and that's in Nashville, Tennessee. And you could uh, check out any information on that Rock Fantasy Camp site. But it's a really cool thing, you know. You go there, you buy into the uh, program, and then it puts you in a band, and uh, you have a counselor. Usually, I'm a counselor, or Rudy Stalzer, or whoever's there at the time. And then we um, put the band together so guys get to jam with Journey and whoever else the other uh, yeah. stars are there and then we do two gigs it's a really cool experience it's like being in the band for yeah. the weekend but yeah serious you know it's deadlines good. and everything so uh, for those fans that want to go see you guys live um, Last in Line live in concert uh, we understand uh, you guys start off uh, the tour uh, in March March 20th in Cincinnati well, that's the next group of uh, shows, March yeah. 20th in Cincinnati. Then we do Detroit. We do St. Charles. Um, I'm not looking at the schedule, but there's a whole bunch of Midwestern shows up there. You can check it out on lastonlineofficial.com. <clears throat> and then we come back. We're doing fly out, so mostly uh, every weekend or two, there's a fly out so up until the uh, end of May. Mm -hmm. uh, Jeff Pilson produced uh, both albums, one and two. Um, how was it working with Jeff? Uh, Jeff's a good old friend from years ago, and um, you know we're like family. So Jeff's great. He's very, uh, very creative and great sounds. He he knows how to get the great drum sound. He knows what he's doing in the studio. That's for sure. So he's a great producer. And this one we actually co-produced because we couldn't. Uh, we had scheduling problems between everybody, so we had to do some stuff on our own, and uh, mm -hmm. so we decided to make it a co-production. But Jeff is fantastic. He's got a great studio, and uh, he really knows, you know, got some good set of ears on him. And the guy who makes it, it's Chris Collier. He's, a, he's like, amazing. Just makes it everything sparkle, you know. So, wow. Uh, you gotta, gotta have a good mixer involved, too. How was it growing up with your brother, uh, Carmine? And is there any competition there? Uh, well, he's like 11 years older than I am. Okay. So we didn't grow up exactly together, but I got to see him play many, many times in that. And when the early years, when we were both in the same house, I was very young and I used to watch him rehearse in the house with uh, all his bands. And it was very inspiring. I had like, that was my entertainment. And I had a full on band in my house playing. So really? that got the fire going in me. And then when he became successful, he used to go see him at all the shows. And uh, it was it was just a really big, cool thing. And yeah. I lit my, that lit my fire. I want to do this, too. Yeah, so started playing, you know, the drums laying around the house. And then I started playing. 
and really practicing and then Carmine suggested um, to my parents to go for drum lessons to the same teacher at Carmine I went to. Uh-huh. And that's what I did. I went for three years, learned how to read. And um, and then from there, I just played in different bands, you know. And, and uh, yeah. just keep doing it until it happened. Until yeah. It happened. I understand you worked uh, with John Lennon, um, the John Lennon, the Beatle, the legend. Uh, that must have been uh, something. It must have been epic. Uh, how was that? Yeah, yeah. I got uh, one of the bands I worked with was in uh, Brooklyn, and we had four horn players. A friend was Jimmy Iovine, is a big producer and the owner of Scope and Beats Audio. <clears throat> and at the time, he liked the band. He produced us. So we, we got a management deal up at Record Plant Studios in New York City, and they signed us to a management deal, so we were able to uh, get a rehearsal, and they gave us a nice room up there for free, so we rehearsed every day, or at, at least every day, or mm-hmm. couple, four or five times a week, and then yeah. one night Jimmy asked us to come do hand claps on a song, so we came downstairs, and we go in and John Lennon's in now. So we did hand class on the song, Whatever Gets You Through the Night, and uh, we were freaking out. Like, oh my God, John Lennon. You know? Yeah, of course, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so we did that, and then John uh, started coming up to our room and hanging out with us. Wow. And uh, played a lot of pool with the guy. That was great. And then uh, uh, he asked us to do three videos with him, which we did, and then we also did a live show. Wow. That he did, and that was his last live show, and that was in 1975. Oh, really? It was on TV. It was a real big deal. Yeah. Oh. So, it was it was a great experience, you know. Very young. Yeah. Sixteen, seventeen years old. Wow. Lennon's final uh, live performance. Wow. Yep, 1975. A different question here uh, for the fans that want to know uh, the, the Black Sabbath fans, the Vinnie Ampassi fans, of course. Uh, how did you land the the seventh gig? Uh, how, how did that come about? Uh, phone call. Yeah. They, they called me yeah. and said, they're looking for a drummer. Um, Bill Ward left the tour and they heard about me and they want to come down and meet the guys. I went, sure. So I met Tony first. He really liked me. And uh, and he told me, well, come down, come down and play. Play with the band. So... That's what I did. And uh, they said, all right, you're in. Wow. And that was it. And from there we toured. We did, uh, we were on the Heaven and Hell album tour. Um, then once that was done, we did a set called Mob Rules, which event to an album called The Mob Rules. And everything was good. Everything was great. So it was just a matter of... Uh, them contacting it, you know. Yeah. Trying to do it. It's Black Sabbath. Fan favorites, man. Uh, Sabbath fans. Uh, the Mob Rules. Heaven and Hell. Uh, I mean, those are classic albums. Uh, yeah, what an honor to be a part of that. Uh, let alone the songwriting part of it. Um, how did the songwriting part of it come about? Uh, did you guys uh, all pitch in different ideas for for the songs or? Did Tony uh, come in with uh, the songs written and stuff? Yeah, everyone uh, pitched in on every yeah. album uh, yeah. since Mob Rules. Uh, even well, Mob Rules. Then uh, we did. We did. Um, let's say after that, we did Live Evil. That was a live album. Then we did Holy Diver. So everyone pitched in on, on all these all these albums. Nobody ever came in with a song. You know, it yeah. was just uh, jamming, putting the ideas together, and that's uh, the way it happened. And that's the way we did both Last and Nine albums as well. What's your opinion on Dio's Disciples? And uh, is is there any uh, riff there? Do you guys get along? I understand you know a couple of the guys. Do um, you guys uh, know each other? Do you guys get along? They're, they're friends, yeah. Craig is a really good friend of mine, and uh, they do what they do, and we do what we do. You know, we're the original band, so you can't really compare yeah. what we're doing. You know, Craig 
and China were playing with Ronnie, but uh, the other guys, some of the other guys never even played with Ronnie. So they're, they got a, they're, they're more like a Dio show, you know, where this is the original members that wrote those songs that, uh, you know, and now turning into a band that's writing their own songs. So. Yeah, you, you guys are the originals. Uh, uh, Jimmy Bain, uh, rest in peace. Uh, you and uh, Vivian Campbell are the originals, right, for a deal? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so it's a different thing, you know. They're, they're, we're the original guys that put deal on the map. Yeah. You know? Classic so. albums, classic albums. Well, you guys are doing great. Last in Line is, is now writing songs. Uh, of course, a second album. Uh, you guys are branching out as a uh, on your own. Um, of course, you guys played Dio stuff, being the original Dio band. The guys that wrote those songs, of course. And but that's great that you guys are are uh, branching out with your own stuff, your own material, Black Out the Sun, and so on. Um, a different question here: uh, How was Ronnie James Dio as a person? Uh, you got to know him very well. Uh, you were there for years. Um, how was he as a person? Uh... Ronnie uh, was like family. We got along really, really great. He was a great, great human being, man. Very nice. Loved his music. Loved his fans. He remembered everybody's name. Loved what he did. And um, great. And in the studio and all the things we did, it was, it was fun to be around. So it was a really great relationship, you know, like another brother to me. So. Any future plans for Kill Devil Hill for those out there wanting to know what happened there with Kill Devil Hill? Kill the Devil Hill is gone, 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 gone. Yep, years ago. I, I left Kill Devil Hill along hmm, 2010, 2011. I don't know. I left them. Yeah, there was some good stuff there. Good material uh, uh, for uh, Kill Devil Hill. A lot of fans out there wanted to know what's going on there. Rex is a great guy. Great guy. They're all great guys, but as a band, it's just hard yeah. to deal with. You know? Yeah. I had a lot of problems. So I left, and then they were going to get another drummer to continue, but I, I guess they did. Uh, for those people out there asking and don't know what a piece sinister is, uh, can you tell us a little bit about that for those people? Uh, that's an album we did together, Carmine and myself. Carmine, that's a horrible echo in there. All right. Um, Carmine and, my, and I did an album, uh, 2000, uh, when was it? Uh, 17, we put it together. Uh -huh. We got a deal, we did, uh, we got all our friends, all our friends, all our different players, and we put songs together, we wrote some songs, and... People sent the Swifts, and we just put it all together, and uh, that's the first album we ever did together. So we're hoping to do another one. Really? Possibly uh, start this year. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Yeah. Really looking forward uh, to that uh, next uh, project off of uh, Epicy. Um, we've got a couple of questions uh, off of social media, if you don't mind, Vinny. Sure. Don Murray is asking, who do you think is the better band uh, Dio or Black Sabbath? Uh, you know, two different two different bands. Hard to say who's the better band. You know, Black Sabbath's always Black Sabbath. You know, it's an amazing, amazing heavy band. And then uh, Dio with the first couple of records, first three records were a band that totally kicked ass. You know, different sound, different uh, players, obviously. So can't really say they're equally equally as good. Wayne. Another fan question wants to know how much influence did Carmine have in influencing you in picking up the sticks and hitting them skins and making your own style? Uh, I told you before, you know, Carmine was in the house with his band. I was a lot younger than Carmine, and that inspired me. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, after that, Carmine was on the road a lot. And when he'd come home, he'd show me different things on the drums. He told my parents to send me the drum lessons, so he got me started that way. And then the connections I made were the, my bands were my own. Yeah. And um, and then I just liked heavier music than, than he played. Mm -hmm. So that's my own personality, and that's how 
I kept it going into. Yeah, you know, I, I didn't play with Rod Stewart. He played with Rod Stewart. I played with Black Sabbath. You know? Yeah, very, very different. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that's pretty much how um, you know. And he was influential because he was a great drummer. So I had to be great too. I had to practice and practice and yeah. make it happen. You know. I tried. Tried my best. So I at least I got somewhere with it. Hell yeah! You're a great, great drummer, Vinny. Uh, as a fan, as a musician. Yes, of course. I think, but... John says, ask Vinny why he hates Toronto. I'm not sure what that means. Toronto? I don't know what that means either. I don't hate anywhere. That's a strange question. I don't question. hate Toronto. That's a weird I've been question. I've in the middle of a zillion, zillion times. Last question, Vinny. Uh, were there any songs off of the Mob Rules sessions that did not make it to, to the album? No. No. There's no songs on any album that we made. Uh, Mob Rules... The Humanizer, uh, Heaven, the last one, The Devil You Know, and then all the Dio stuff. We never had enough time to, to, to write excess songs. It was always on a schedule. Sam was always busy, and we didn't try to rush songs, so we took the time and just got songs for the album, you know? Yeah. There's no extra. If there was, they would have been out already. Well, Vinny, we appreciate your time here with us, your fans. Uh, also, from everybody here at J Rock's Metal Zone, thank you for making time for us. Uh, on behalf of that metal interview, thank you for being a part of this episode. Thank you, Vinny. Absolutely. Thank you for having me, and uh, thank you to all the fans for listening. You guys rock. All yep. right. Take care. Bye bye. Well, there you go. Uh, to all the Black Sabbath fanatics, uh, Dio, Kill Devil Hill, Empathy, Sinister. Last in line, of course, the, to all the Vinny Epicy fanatics, uh, there you go. You heard the man himself speak about his career, uh, his life, his musical journey. We thank him, of course, uh, for making time for us here at J-Rock's Metal Zone. And, of course, to all the listeners, all our fans, thank you guys for following us. On all formats, we're on uh, all types of social media. We're on Reddit, Pinterest, Snapchat. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Tumblr, uh, Twitch, Periscope, and all that stuff. So go ahead and follow us, uh, like our stuff. Thank you for tuning in to jrocksmetalzone.com, that metal interview. And don't forget to pick up the latest album by Last In Line, uh, which is titled Last In Line 2. And tune in to J Rock's Metal Zone as we spin their music all the time. And thank you, Vinny, one more time for making time for us and your fans. So thank you. And we'll see you guys next time on That Metal Interview. J Rock's Metal Zone.com. <laughs>